now with Gary Stobie, he's head of Corsairs. Not to say what's Corsairs, aside from I think the best brand for an exchange traded fund in the world. Uh, it used to be Greenroy Bank uh, ETFs, now they've rebranded it. Gary, uh, thanks for joining us. About a month ago you rebranded it. That's about right, yeah. two months ago, April. April, yeah. okay. So uh, head of Corsairs, uh, a fast growing stable of, of, of exchange traded funds, ETFs. We particularly want to touch on your most recent one, which is now approaching two months old, which is your top 50. Everyone in this country, if you've done anything with the market in this country, you've heard top 40. Uh, top 50, the obvious thing is it's, it's 50 instead of 40 stocks, but there's probably a, a few more nuances. What is the, the methodology behind it? And is it it's an S&P, is it not? An S&P Dow Jones index. Yes, that, that's right. So just by, just by way of background, most uh, exchanges around the world, most stock exchanges around the world have a official index partner. So the sure. Johannesburg Stock Exchange has a partner being... FTSE yeah. in London, which is an index business. So when I was growing up in financial markets, and you were growing up, Simon, there was only one set of indexes available. They were the FTSE JSC indexes. However, globally, there are many more index firms that provide indexes on different markets across the world. So we're quite fortunate in our market now where we have the FTSE providing indexes, MSCI providing indexes, and most recently, S&P Dow Jones who are very famous in their home markets because of the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, etc. But S&P Dow Jones are now providing indexes in South Africa. So they're a fresh index house. And they are the licensed saw. We are the licensee. Um, and they came into the market and they took a fresh approach to the market. They said, right, there is a top 40. Is the top 40 the most representative index of our large cap or, or the broad market index? Well, when the top 40 was put together, that was a couple of decades ago, our market's far more mature now, there's a lot more liquidity available, so instead of offering top 40, let's offer top 50. Yeah. Why would that make sense? Well, you get extra diversification in terms of having the extra, the extra 10 stocks, and you get additional market depth, and, and, and the index ends up being slightly less volatile as well because you've got... You've got and that volatility is just because of the extra 10 shares, really, more That's than anything right. else. Yeah. There's also a big point, and I've got the two lists, and if you look at, at, at your top 50 versus top 40, uh, for example, Billiton's 8.35 versus 9.4, and I'm rounding the numbers here. So your Billiton's about a percent lower, um, UMTN about a percent, the big one, NASPAS about 1.7 percent lower, SAB 0.9 less in your index. What we're also then seeing is, is less exposure to that handful of stocks at the top. Which sometimes works. SAB and NASPAS have been yes. driving this market yes. for a long time, but at some point that bus stops, and then right. the vanilla top forty is going to lag a little bit and struggle a bit. Yeah, I, th I think by adding the ten next biggest stocks, you're bringing in what they call in the index world a size factor. So mm -hmm. you're moving the index towards a mid cap bias mm -hmm. or, or, or a larger mid cap explosion. Why would that make sense? I mean, so if you think about it intuitively. Markets, uh, companies that have the largest market cap are generally those that are the most mature. Sure. Take SAB as an example. NASP is not such a good example, but SAB is a, a good example. So it's good to have a large weighting towards SAB. They're a powerful company. They, were, um, you know, they can bully competitors. They have large market share, etc. It's good to have a large uh, investment in SAB. However, you would say that they are at, if you looked at a traditional growth curve of a company, sort of the life cycle of a company, they're a mature company, not yeah. so. So intuitively, companies that are smaller, who further down in the index, would be, um, often have higher, higher growth because they're earlier on in their life cycle. And, and some um, of them, I mean, some of them that are springing to number, and I'm starting at the bottom, it's, it's, it's Spar, it's, it's the Fashini Group, it's, it's Telcom, it's, it's Truers. Mm. Some of them, I mean, Telcom's been around forever, but they Let's take Telcom out of the equation. Yeah. The other guys are, are, you can see their space, whereas, as you say, with SAB, I mean, how much more beer can they really sell yeah. when they're a global player already? So, if we go to, uh, I'm trying to find the code here. What is your, the code for the uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's C top 50. C, C top 50. TOP 50. TOP 50. Um, normally, you, you buy it as per your broker, and you get it through your, 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 your plans if you're going via uh, 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 whichever the service providers are available. Is it just market cap? So this is not smart beta. You're basically taking the, the market the, cap. This is a traditional market cap index. Uh, there are a couple of things to know about it and that it, it caps the largest share to 10%. So mm -hmm. SAB and, and NASPERS, for instance, at the moment have been capped at 
capped at 10 percent um, and it's also what's known in the index world as free float adjusted now i don't want to get too technical but very briefly free float adjusted just means that if there's a large company that has a large part of its share capital owned by one company take capitec for example a large portion of capitec is owned by PSG, gotcha. you would exclude the PSG's shareholding in Capitec and then look at Capitec in terms of what's left in terms of tradable tradable shares. So on that basis, Capitec is in the top 40, it's not actually in the top 50 because it's free floats. Uh, okay, because I was going to ask you about that, Anglo Platinum is another because Anglo American owns 86% or something of, of Anglo Platinum. Correct. So it's not there. That's right. Okay, because that, yeah. that was my other question because I saw a couple that were missing. And then of course, so what do you have? You have Coronation, you have Implax, you have Goldfields. What you get is in a sense those top, the mid caps bubbling up. That's right. You also get the top 40s bubbling down. That's right. Uh, Implax, uh, Imperial and uh, who was the other one that got tossed out? Um, now my mind's gone blank, but the three exiters left we'll top 40 but stay with you for now. That's right. Small. But most of the indexes will have a phase out, phase in period, so mm -hmm. they won't immediately adjust the indexes. They'll wait to see whether, yeah. certainly on the way out, on the way in they're more forgiving, on the way out um, uh, they phase out the shares so that the index isn't buying and selling the whole time because that sort of counter the whole idea behind the index, so you shouldn't have to trade your portfolio um, a lot. So right now, for instance, the index is actually at 52 shares because mm -hmm. there are two shares that have fallen outside of the top 50, and, and but but there's a bit sort of a grace period before they officially officially fall out. Cool. I I, I like it. I like the idea. I like the the the, the, the broader bunch. Uh, it's going to give me a lot of volatility. And I think for a lot of people, volatility is important. You don't want to wake up and see your your your, your core holding ETF bouncing all over the place. If we go from your core top 50. What we're also seeing is a rise of some smart beta, which I want to touch on briefly. This is not smart beta, but you've got two smart beta uh, products. And really, those are, are bringing more than just free float and market cap to it. This brings a little more nuance, still almost in a methodical process, yes. but a little more nuance to the selection criteria. Yeah. Look, so traditionally, when you looked at index funds or ETFs, they were all market cap. Um, mm -hmm. weighted index. So the biggest ETF in the world, the S&P 500, uh, Spider ETF, that's a market cap weighted um, in, um, uh, ETF. But what's evolved in the index world over the last 15 years is this concept of smart beta, where you're moving away from market cap weightings into another type of um, style index or strategic index or sort of outcomes focus index, which has all been put under this new title, smart beta. So all that smart beta is is, is a move away from using company size to establish the weighting in the index to using some other factor to establish the weighting in, in, in the index. And you can do that through multiple different techniques, price earnings ratios, dividend yields, volatility, momentum, a bunch of different, different styles. But in particular, at core shares, we've got two styles that we capture outside of market cap. Mm -hmm. One is the dividend aristocrats, looking at companies that have paid a consistent and growing dividend. Uh, and the other is the low volatility strategy, so companies who've got low levels of volatility or low levels of risk, basically. What is the universe from for those two stocks? I mean, are you the, that's the, the, the universe is a composite index, what S&P called the composite index, so it's the all share index, basically. Okay. So, so it's, it's outside of the 145, 150 mm -hmm. stocks, yeah. But I like the point that you made there, and you explained it well. Typically, we've looked at indices and we've done market cap, nothing yeah. else. Right. In truth, size is not a measure of much frankly, beyond size. I mean, you know, we, we look at some of them such as, I mean, I'll take Anglo and Billiton, they, they're the two easy ones. Ten years ago, they were the top 40. Mm. Ten years time, they might not even be in the top 40. There's clearer ways to say, this is my, whether it be yeah. cash flow, dividend yield, market cap's not the best way, really, really. Well, in particular, I mean, um, so the, the big sort of thought leader in this space globally is a guy called Rob Arnott. He runs uh, Raffi in, in California. Mm -hmm. And he says the Achilles heel for a market cap weighted indice is that as, as the share price goes up on a particular share, your weighting in, the, in that share goes up too. Now, normally investors are trying to sell a share after it's run and trying to buy a share after it's fallen. Whereas the market cap weighted indice does the opposite, it buys more of the share, sells uh, more of the share if it's, if it's fallen. So it's a little bit sort of counterintuitive in terms of how normal investors approach things. Okay. Bearing in mind, smart beta is quite controversial because it is a move away from just investing simplistically in the market. And there's a lot to be said for investing simplistically in the market. 
Um, but what people like Rob Arnott do is they look at sort of fundamental ways of, of looking at the index. Um, they also do a lot of work in the low volatility space and so forth. So it's, it's breaking that relationship between price mm -hmm. and the weighting in, in the index. Um, and I take this point, I mean, one of the arguments against smart feature is that, oh, we'll be moving away from passive. But in truth, the decision to buy an ETF is active. The decision which ETF, do I buy your core 50, uh, top core 50, do I buy uh, a Satrix 40 or a better beat equal weighted, which will yeah. be in your stable. Those are active decisions anyway. That's right. So it's just a slight slip. So let's wrap it up. A couple of points. Uh, your website address, coreshares.coza. That's right. Do you have a, a, an investment plan where I can come and buy Why you? No, we don't. We work through distributors like okay. ATFSA and others. Mm -hmm. um, or, or your stock or broker. Or stock broker, back online, whichever. Yeah, whichever. You just head to your stock broker, you'll find it there. There is an infographic. Uh, if you're listening to this on the podcast, uh, which out on the 16th, of uh, July's infographic on justonelap.com, looking at top 40 versus the, the core top 50 from core shares. Uh, and Gareth, we're doing a power hour on Thursday, 23rd. Uh, JSC Power Hour, it's at the JSC or webcast. Go to justonelap.com or jsc.coza to book for that. Gareth, appreciate the time. Thank you, Simon. Cheers. Well done.